to talk a little bit about the ARCH or autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity model. So you may be well aware that the ordinary least squares regression assumes homoscedasticity, that is, constant variance. And under heteroscedasticity, which means non-constant variance, a lot of the properties of the basic regression are no longer valid. That is, estimators are no longer efficient, uh, regression predictions will also be inefficient, and many of the tests like the t-test and the f-test will be invalid. So ARCH is one type of heteroscedasticity proposed by Engel in 1982. Um, he would go on in 2003 to win the Nobel Prize in Economics. And this paper appeared in Econometrica and looked at the um, inflation rates in the UK. So this deals with heteroscedasticity in time series data. So you can have heteroscedasticity for a lot of different things. For example, let's say income and consumption. And you might find that um, people at lower income levels or their variance relative to consumption is pretty stable. When you get to wealthier people, there's probably a much bigger fluctuation because wealthy people obviously have plenty of money and don't need to spend all their money on consumption. So this is one that deals with time series data. And ARCH is about modeling variance. And the idea is the variance of the error in one period depends on or is conditional on the variance of the error in the previous period. So that's the autoregressive part and that's the conditional term as well. So that's how you get the term autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity. Why do we care about this? Well, many financial return series show what we call volatility clustering. That is, large changes in asset prices tend to follow large changes. Small changes tend to follow small changes. So um, we'd like to be able to model volatility. And here I have a graph of market returns and I got this from Ken French's data site from his website where he's posted all the data that you need to estimate the Fama French three-factor and five-factor models. He has daily returns, he has monthly returns, he has um, weekly returns I believe as well. And so I just grabbed his his returns, made it a lot easier, the excess returns for the market, but he also has the risk-free rate. So I added back in the risk-free rate, so instead of having the excess return, I simply have the market return. And I plotted it here from 2003 to 2021, and this is daily data. And you can see that we have periods of relative calm, right, and then here around the financial crisis of 08, 09, you see this big spike, right, a lot of volatility in the returns. And then stable again, a little more volatility here, et cetera, et cetera, right? And pretty stable here for a number of years. And then big spike here during our glo recent global pandemic. So why do we care about modeling variance? Well, volatility has a large impact on markets. It's so important that the CBOE has created an index of volatility called the VIX, V-I-X. Um, it's also an important variable in the Black-Scholes option pricing model, where you need to know the volatility of the stock's returns. And we know that during periods of high volatility, investors often move to safer assets, that is the flight to safety. So really understanding volatility um, can be quite useful. So. How do we go about handling this so-called ARCH modeling? Well, what we do is we fit a best model to the data. So essentially we're modeling for the conditional mean. Okay, So it may be an AR model, it might be an MA model, I've discussed these in other videos, it might be an, an ARMA, ARMA model, it might be an ARIMA model. Okay, And now what we do is we look at the residuals and we plot them. Does the plot of the residuals indicate there are different volatilities over time? Okay, if so, this may be a candidate 
for an orange mom. So let's consider this. So here's the model we fit. Let's say return in time period T is going to be follow an ARMA 1 1 model. That is one lagged um, return and also one lagged error term. And you go about estimating these uh, coefficients here, and you have this constant here. And um, we have this model, and we assume that the errors are distributed normally with mean zero and variance of sigma squared t. Notice we have the t subscript, which means that it changes over time, right? If we have homoscedasticity, we just have sigma squared, no t subscript, because it's always the same. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that this variance of the error term follows this autoregressive model. That is, that it's based on alpha naught plus alpha 1, a parameter, times epsilon, or the error term squared, one period lagged, plus the current period error term. So to test whether time series is arch 1, that is one lagged period of the error term, um, or the squared error term, we regress the squared uh, residuals from a previously estimated time series. So again, our AR, MA, or ARMA model. So this model here, if that's what we chose, on a constant and one lag of the residual squared. And it turns out if this alpha 1 right here is statistically significant from zero, we conclude that the time series is arch one. So just like with the ARMA models and the AR and the MA model as well, you can have more than one lag. So you could have, for example, P lags of the um, error term here. Now, you know, having a whole bunch of lags is not necessarily a great model, but you could have two lags or three lags, etc. And if you run a model like this, the test, test statistic is t times r squared, where t is the number of observations, and it's distributed as chi squared with p degrees of freedom. And what you're doing is you're testing the null hypothesis that all those alphas, alpha 1, alpha 2, etc., are equal to zero. So if you fit a good model, let's find, let's suppose that the um, arch 1 model is good, we can forecast the variance 1 period into the future by taking the estimate of our um, alpha naught plus our estimate of the alpha 1 times the error term squared in the current period. So this is one way we can get a forecast of the future variance. So let me just mention a little bit about GARCH, or Generalized Autoregressive con uh, Conditional Heteroscedasticity. And it's an extension of the ARCH model developed by uh, Tim Bolerslev in 1986. He was a, a student of Ingalls at the University of California, San Diego. So what he's done here is he's simply taken, for example, the ARCH1-1 model, and he's added another term that is one lag period of the variance from the previous period. So why do you do this? Well, it turns out that sometimes when you're running an ARCH model, you may have lots and lots of these squared error terms. And oftentimes, adding one, one lag of the variance term here okay, picks up a lot of that and makes it a much more parsimonious model. So it avoids all of this um, overfitting of the model. So it's, um, it's an extension here, another way to estimate this. And again, you could have, again, P lags here for the um, squared error term, and Q lags for the um, for the variance terms. But oftentimes a one-one model fits pretty well. So there are 
there are a couple of things we want to note here, conditions for using GARGE. So it turns out that we want to make sure we get a positive variance. So alpha naught needs to be greater than zero, as do all the alpha i's and the beta i's. We also need, to, need it to be the case that the sum of the alpha i's plus the sum of the beta i's are between less than 1 okay, and positive. So we want to ensure that we have a decaying variance, that the variance isn't continuing to grow and grow and grow. So I hope this gives you at least a little bit of a, a basic understanding of, of those terms, arch and garch. And, you know, many of these models are incorporated into your standard econometric packages like eViews. So they do the estimation for you and they'll, um, you know, provide plots of uh, autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation functions so that you can determine um, what's the best fit for the model.